What is up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome to another episode of Fanboys Anonymous. Is uh, we don't really have anything for this. It's not really a review point. It's not really. <laughs> I don't know. Just going into this, we're doing the uh, the Oscars review, 2020 edition. It's the 92nd Academy Awards, and we're going to be talking about who just won, who didn't win, who got snubbed, our thoughts, all the other kind of stuff that goes along with that. And who are we? I am your host, as always, Tony Mango, and joining me is Robert DeFelice. I'd like to immediately thank the Academy for just allowing me to be here. So thank you, Academy, wherever you may be. I hope you, you're listening. You like him. You really like him. I, I mean, you like me, and I guess in this case, that's all that matters. <laughs> well, if you like us, then you should drop a comment below. Because that it keeps the discussion going, lets us know your thoughts on what all this is all about. So obviously, if you're listening on the audio-only platforms that are out there, like the Apple Podcast side of things, or Google Podcasts, or Stitcher Podcasts, or Spotify Podcasts, or Blank Blank Podcasts, whatever different venue it is, then you're out of luck when it comes to leaving comments. But if you head on over to YouTube and you subscribe to the channel, if you haven't done that already, and you ring that little bell for the notifications, and you like the video... One of the other things you could do is drop a comment there. And by all means, I want to know what you have to say about the best picture winner and, you know, what's your favorite costume design and blah, blah, blah like that. So, you know, talk about that stuff. We're going to talk about some other plugs along the way, but we got a lot of categories to go down here and we got even the ceremony itself. And I guess we should start with that. I mean, this is another year where we don't have a host and we have just a series of random people. What are you thinking about that? I'm not a fan. Like, I enjoyed... Probably going to date myself here, but whatever, you're older than me, so... <laughs> like, I was very used to, like, Billy Crystal. I, th- I was thinking that you were going to say Billy Crystal. Hosting it. And, you know, uh, Billy Crystal doesn't do much of anything anymore. <laughs> but I always said he was a good host for the Oscars, and he always, like... It's very fun. You know, I think a host sets the tone. Like, when... You know, Patrick Harris does the Tonys or like, you know, I think Alicia Keys hosted the Grammys. That's important. They set the tone. Now you're just like, random person, come on stage. Yay. There's elements to it that I like. It's uh, the ceremony itself to me is not the best thing in the world. And I pitched this in 2018, I think it might have been last year, but I'm pretty sure it was two years ago. I still think that the Oscars, they're worried about, like, viewership and everything. I don't think that it should just be a one-show thing. I still feel like they should make it a weekend convention thing. And I, if you were to read the whole breakdown, I did this thing. It's up on the website, so check it out on fanboysanonymous.com. But it's about, like, Oscars convention weekend or something like that is the name of it, where basically my idea was, why not treat it like San Diego Comic-Con? or New York Comic Con, where you have like little different venues for different things and different screenings. Like you could hold film screenings the whole time, whether it's the Oscar uh, related movies or it's movies that are coming up that people want to like shop for next year's Oscars or anything like that. You could have like autograph signings. You could have display cases of, you know, production design and costume design and different things like that. You can have installations that can explain to you the difference between sound editing and sound mixing. And you can split things up as, okay, tonight we're going to do the acting block. And for this one, we're going to do like a deeper dive into these categories that we don't have. Like they, I mean, Brad Pitt mentioned it, no love for stunt people. And it's weird that there is no stunt award in any fashion, whether it's Stunt is choreography there, wait, or is there really not? I it's one of those things I've never yeah. thought about. I assumed that they are honored in some way. Not for this show. Do they get the SAG awards or something? Oh, they might for like those kind of things. I'm not too sure, but it's not the same, you know. It's kind of like if a movie wins a Golden Globe, people are like, Yeah, it wins a Golden Globe, but if it is it gonna win the Oscar? And if it doesn't, people are like, Ah, I want a Golden Globe, who cares? So it's like you might win the, like, there might be a SAG thing. There might be, like, a technical achievement thing here and there, but it, it should be, like, a best stunt choreography or best stunt performance or something like that. 
And if you could do like the acting block, it would really get into it. And if you did say the technical block, you could get more into things like, I don't know the difference between sound editing and sound mixing. And I don't feel as an outsider, I might be completely wrong on this. I don't feel like that should be two categories. I feel like that should just be best sound design and mix the two together and have everybody a part of it and be like, well, because they have to work together in some fashion because they're working on the sound. Just the same as like a director needs to work with the cameraman and the cinematographer and, you know, so why not have like, okay, the technical side of things, this is the technical block of awards. We're going to do deeper dives into like best, CGI effects, best practical effects, best sound editing, best sound mixing, best visual, blah, blah, blah. And then you have like, say, I don't know, like if you want to split it up like acting in one side, technical in one side, you go into more of like the writing stuff and it's like all that stuff. And then eventually you have one main show and you cut down the awards a little bit. I know there's a lot of people that are not all that into documentaries. Do you really need to have documentary short subject as one of the categories that you put on the show that is like four hours long and people don't want to watch the whole time? I don't think anybody's really watching it for that. But if you incorporate that into like the international block for like a whole separate section on one day of the weekend, then you have a quick clip where you're like, Hey, these movies won this. And you know, like I think that there's a, a way that they can do that kind of stuff. I think I'm amazed at how you're trying to break down the Oscars into an even longer, like large scale thing. But I think that this society is just not equipped for that. The Academy is has always kind of been this like I don't want to say snobbish, but yeah, but snobbish. <laughs> highbrow, let's say. And I feel like they would never go for that. Like documentaries are a thing that's on there because you know they feel like well this is real film work. And again, I'm just speaking based on pure assumption. And the things that you hear through the years. But I don't know. I don't hate the idea. I just don't think that this world is ready for it. I, I kind of assume that most people watching the Oscars are not super duper into movies. You know, like, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, you and I aren't going to talk about the red carpet. Because <laughs> the red carpet's the red carpet. Now, uh, a pox on you, sir. You see, because of my family, I saw really? the red carpet. So I can tell you a little bit about the red carpet. You can tell me how useless it was? The red carpet's never been my favorite thing. I think it's it's definitely contributed to this weird celebrity, unhealthy idolization culture. But it's also, it must be super fun for them. You know, like, they get to show off, and that's cool for them. But, like, I don't think it adds to the event in the same way. Like, any pre-show, like, I don't think pre-shows add to events. I think it's just one of those things that, like, you can equate it to a lot of different elements of pop culture. Like, I don't care about the royal family. Now, I don't wish anything bad on them, obviously, because I don't know them and, you know, hate them or anything like that. But, like, I could not give the slightest shit about what uh, – Pippa is one of the names, right? And the one of them? You know, like a – Pippa – Is it Pippa one of the kids? Something like that. I don't <laughs> know. Like, I don't even know which one Pippa is at this point. So, it's like, oh, what is Pippa up to? What is you know, Brad Pippa wearing today? Sounds, or... like a, sounds like a name. Uh, I know Meghan Markle and uh, Harry because they've been in the news a lot recently. And, like, I think the royal family's cool. Like, they showed a commercial for a documentary on the royal family with CNN. And I, I personally am the kind of 
you know, dork that will sit down and probably watch that just because I think I'm fascinated by how people live life and how wild it can be from how like you or I live life. So that's interesting to me, but like I get that, you know, nobody wants to sit down for eight hours and watch the royal wedding. That I'll say, you know, like that's not for everybody. I just feel like there's a lot of people that get attached with celebrities because of ident- wanting to identify with them. Maybe not even necessarily identifying them with them. And I, you know, I can kind of equate this a little bit. This is going into a deep, deep dive that isn't even about movies. But hey, why not the hell talk about it anyway? Like I'm not into fan, uh, being a fan of bands, and I'm not into right. being a fan of celebrities in particular. I'm not into like any kind of like hero worship, and I I think there's just like a thing in my brain that just says, yeah, they're people, and if they're good at something, that's cool, and if they're not, I don't care at all, and if they've got like, oh, this is my style, I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, there's a lot of people that really love Lady Gaga. But if she were anything, and it's not necessarily that she's a a singer, but if she were literally anything and she just acted the way that she does, they'd be a fan of her just because she's like a thing. And like people follow the Kardashians because they're like rich and famous and that's what people want to get into. And I feel like the red carpet is more like, let me try to feel like like I'm fancy for a night because I'm watching Scarlett Johansson wearing this dress and I'm going to be like, ooh, that dress looks pretty and kind of like fantasize. What if I were wearing that? And like, you know. Well, like, I think that culture kind of evolved into what is now, and I hate this word, but influencer culture where deep dive i apologize ladies <laughs> but everybody thinks that they are a brand yeah i was gonna and say every- if you didn't use the word brand here i'd be very shocked <laughs> and everybody thinks that they you know okay like social media is great and yes it's nice to get your opinion out on stuff but your opinion doesn't have to line up with everybody else in the world and you don't have to like think that you are somehow better because you have this, you know, I'm going to look down on you opinion. And if you happen to resonate with an actor or an actress or a character in a movie or even the lyrics of a song, that's cool. But if you think that that means that you should then be the center of their world that's just like a weird it's a weird thing right i mean it's like, also weird when you see people do things like since we follow the pro wrestling side of things just do a search on twitter for like roman reigns and see how many accounts are fake roman reigns count and you're like you're really gonna pretend to be this other person because you're that obsessed with that person and, like listen and again there are communities for that if you want to role play, whatever. But if you cannot separate this world from reality, that's a problem. And I think that over time, because of things like red carpets bleeding into influencer culture, we now live in a world where people don't have to where people are always trying to chase the fame because it's that attainable now. So that's why we don't watch the, uh, red red carpet. Carpet, <laughs> which goes back into the original idea of, we don't have a host. <laughs> and <laughs> it's 15 minutes later. We're talking about that. We don't have a host. Uh, yeah, I, I like some aspects of that. And I dislike some aspects when they have a bad host. Like, I have not really liked Ellen as a host. It can really drag down this show. But when they have a good host, there's some good stuff that's going on. Like, I remember, like, Hugh Jackman being fun. Uh, you know, Billy Crystal, you mentioned, he's had some good jokes. Uh, Ricky Gervais is good when he does, like, the Golden Globes, and he can, like, rip on some people. But I also feel like they should tighten things up a little bit. And to me... If we're talking about the, if we're not even getting into the awards yet, but if we're talking about just like 
the overall ceremony and everything. One of the things that I didn't like, why is Eminem doing a musical performance of Lose Yourself? Okay. The, the movie Eight Mile came out in 2002. It's 18 so years ago at this point, and it has no connection that I can think of to any of these movies that are like being honored today. Like to me, the, the Oscars ideally for me, outside of that whole convention type thing that I went down that that separate diatribe about, I want the movies that happen this year to be focused on. And maybe like a you know, some references here and there. Like I I like it when they're going like out of commercial and they'll play like the theme for me tea or something. Cause it's like, ah oh, yeah, classic movie. But I don't know, unless it's like the, the anniversary of something, are you really just putting Eminem on this show just to get a musical act because you think people aren't going to watch? If that's the case, fucking cut the show down. People don't want to watch it for four hours, you know? So, to the best of my knowledge, that's always what it was. When you had musical performances, they were direct tie-ins to movies. They were like up for song of the year or they were like the theme of the movies that are up for best picture. But like I saw the commercials and I'm like, Billie Eilish is performing at the Oscars. She hasn't been directly tied into any movie. And then you're like, Oh, Hey, Eminem's on screen. And and you pointed out to me, you're like, okay, so they're just doing this thing where we're having top stars perform just to get a boost. And I think that's unfortunate because I think the movies are really good. And, you know, screw you. I think, and never mind your TV show, the people that win should get more time to speak. Because, <laughs> you know, this is, this is the fucking moment of their lives. Like, I, I don't know. Like, if it's not selling that well, make it an in-house thing. You know? I mean, I really feel people like... People are always going to clamor for the Oscars, even if you put it on YouTube. I mean, there's clearly, there's people that watch that that aren't super into movies. I'm not the biggest film buff in the world, but I've watched the Oscars every year, even if I don't like any of the movies that are really being nominated, because I'm interested in knowing, like, a little bit more about the the film scene and everything that's kind of going around that. And I am interested. Like, I try... For the most part, I try to watch every movie, if not most, that gets nominated for Best Picture. And most of the movies that get nominated outside of that, too. I mean, I'm not going to watch some movie that I know I'm going to hate that's only nominated for Best Makeup. All right. I'm not going to sit through three hours of, like, Queen Elizabeth, this and that, uh, drama from what... Uh, it's not going to be me. Or, you know, like, every month I do the Six Flicks picks. And I'll go through and I'm like... All right, if I'm picking six movies out of this month to watch, there is no way in hell I'm watching the story of, like, in 1918 uh, Paraguay, this woman who uh, used to knit discovered that her estranged father was... I'm like, oh, fuck this. I ain't watching that. Instead, I'll watch that stupid-ass bloodshot or something like you know like just it's not not for me and stuff but i do want to know more about what's going on and i am more tapped into it than the average person because there's plenty of people who i talk to even just on a regular basis who will be like yeah i didn't even know any of the movies that were nominated at all i didn't see any of them but man i can't wait for that fast and furious to come out and stuff and i'm like all right you are not the target audience for this but you know what i'm gonna gonna run a risk here and say this last year black panther was like up for all these awards might have even been up for best picture i can't recall the top of my head but like if you can do that for black panther why aren't the movies that are making you know records and breaking all these boundaries Always up for picture of the year when that's the movies that everybody goes to the movies to see. Well, they did try to do that thing where it was like uh, outstanding achievement and popular film or something. I forget how they worded it, but they basically wanted to create a, an award last year 
for Black Panther. Black, Pan- Black Panther. Well, was that a word there this year? No, they didn't have it last year either because they people saw right through it. They were like, oh, OK, you're trying to make a pop culture you're film. Give- and that way you don't have to give it best picture so you can still be snooty and save yourself from giving that best picture and then be like, well, we gave it the best popular film that's kind of the same. And then See, so that's when I go. So for the casuals, is the MTV Movie Awards more important than this? You know, it wouldn't shock me if that was the case. Like, I think that there's a lot of people that the the People's Choice Awards, like that kind of stuff. I think that a lot of people are more into it than that. And if you want to get the people to watch, you have to be a little less snooty because it's just it's like not exclusive. Uh, it's too exclusive. It's not inclusive enough. It's not a matter- be the first to admit I like the Oscars because I have a tendency there. There is a bit of a snooty side to me, but like I can fully admit, you know, I didn't see every movie that was nominated this year. But I, I also would like to see a, an award show where it's dominated by the movies that actually resonate, <laughs> make millions. You know, like I, I, Fast and the Furious 9 is coming out. That's going to do tremendous business. It will never be up for an Oscar ever. Well, for the context Not even close. of this, how many which movies did you see out of this list? So I saw Joker, obviously. I saw a marriage story. I saw Rocket Man. I saw um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And I saw a little bit of Ad Astra because I just never got to finish it. So I had seen, bringing up my list right now, I saw, at least as far as now goes, I'm going to still try to watch some more of it. Oh, and I saw all the animated ones because I'm a fucking child. (laughs) (laughs) i've seen 1917 ad astra avengers endgame of course uh ford versus ferrari or ford v ferrari or ford v ferrari dawn of justice however you want to refer to it uh joker knives out once upon a time in hollywood parasite which i watched this week star wars rise of skywalker the Irishman, The Lion King, and Toy Story 4. I haven't okay, seen... so yeah, I did see uh, The Irishman. Great fucking movie. And I did see Star Wars, but of course, like, all the nerdy stuff, and Once, and uh, A Marriage Story is what I saw. I do plan on seeing A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, if I get a chance. I ha- I have that. I need to watch it. I will see Frozen 2 at some point. Want to see that? Is it out? Uh, It might be. Screener might be out at the very least. But hey, you know, officially we don't condone the blah, 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 all that other kind of crap. You know what I mean? What did you, what is a screener? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I tried watching How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, because I thought that the other two movies were pretty decent, and I just couldn't get into it. I, I did like the other movies more. I but I'm a fan of Toothless. Like, I think that's the best thing DreamWorks has ever done outside of Shrek. Yeah, I'm not going to fight that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have not watched Jojo Rabbit yet, but I I kind of want to check that out. Uh, I already saw Same. the first Maleficent. I don't need to see the second. <laughs> I would li- I'd probably watch Judy. I do not really connect with Judy Grable. Uh, Judy Grable. Wow. Judy Garland. <laughs> Got the wrestling on the mind. Judy Garland is just, I'm not interested. So, nah, for me. Uh, I haven't seen Rocket Man. I haven't seen Richard Jewell, but I wanted to see both of those potentially. More so Richard Jewell than Rocket Man. So I'm not like a huge Elton John fan. I had a couple of his songs, but that's about it. And, uh, is one of them Rocket Man? Oh, yeah. Of course it's Rocket Man. One of them. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the best ones for sure. Oh, wait. Oh, hold on. And uh, probably Saturday night. I was Actually, gonna say for fighting. I think it's for partying. No, not even uh, Tyler Bate can make me do that one. <laughs> it's not the other the fucking give it up. It's uh, people singing the Tyler Bate chants. You are not doing a good is enough job t- with that. Is it Tiny Dancer? Oh, I've got. Well, you, we want to want to go down the rabbit hole with uh, Elton John. I got. Let's see. Let me bring up my yeah. uh, my list here because I got. I do have Tiny Dancer. Why don't we go down this? You're listening to this. You you want us to talk more? <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. So let me bring up my uh, my music collection. We're just gonna do a little uh, a little searchy poo. Elton John. All right. So I've got "Can You Feel the Love Tonight." Mm-hmm. Two ver- two versions of "Candle in the Wind." Because one of them's the uh, "Goodbye England's Rose" version. Uh, the, the live version of "Stan" for Eminem and Elton John. Ooh, Tiny Dancer. Uh, Rocket Man. Sorry seems to be the hardest word. Two versions of "Goodbye Yellow Brick Road." One of them's live. And your song. I'm shocked at how much Elton John you have. I am shocked too. Uh, now that I'm looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't see Rocket Man. I didn't see Marriage it's... Story yet. But I do want to potentially check that out. Eh. And I might check out the Lighthouse. And I might check out the Two Popes. Uh, it's now that the Oscars are done, and I know which movies win. I'm a le- little less inclined to check out something like the Two Popes because I'm like, that ah, didn't win anything. I don't need to watch it. Oh yeah, that. it's like WrestleMania. If you don't catch everything you're probably gonna skip to the main matches you're not gonna watch everything yeah you're not gonna really watch the pre-show if you don't really care all that much about it to watch it live so that's the context of like that one of the things that we are not going to really address here too much at least not in the sense that we could run down everybody and all that stuff but very general opinion i am not into politics when it comes to the oscars i feel like i get it you have a platform and you want to raise some kind of an awareness for something. I feel like raising awareness is one of those buzz things that people do to make themselves feel better. It doesn't actually accomplish most shit because we're going to do a fun run to raise awareness for, I don't know, diabetes. And it's like, all right, well, you, you did a run. Is anybody doing better on diabetes? Nope. Okay. Well, you pat yourselves. In the- oh, I saw knives out too. I didn't mention that. Uh, you did. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. I mentioned it twice. Uh, <laughs> but like, um, you know that that that's not really accomplishing much. And I feel like when every year twenty people come up and they talk in the Oscars about whatever political issue they are, whether it's something super serious, it's like weather change is a real thing and climate change is a problem, or something where they're just kind of like, I'm sick and tired of socks getting lost in the laundry, and we should figure. <laughs> then it's like, all right. It's not actually doing anything. You're getting an award for like best cinematography. Move on, or shut up. You know, uh, best film editing. How about you go? I'd like to thank the director for letting me do my job, and I'd like to thank my uh, <laughs> the people that I worked with for helping me edit the film. You know, the film's good. You should check it out. I really hope that I get to do more of these. Thank you for the award. I appreciate it. See you later, everybody. Not like. Well, no, I'm gonna say this. If you're like, let's let's say you went for Into the Spider-Verse, you know? Don't get up there and get political. But if you won for a documentary that is extremely political, oh, yeah. Yeah. sure. But like, you know, getting up there and saying, we need to raise awareness about awareness, it doesn't do much for me when you want Best Actress in a movie about, you know, fame. Like... Yeah, if you're doing the the documentary, you get best documentary feature, and it's like the war in Somalia and all this, and you're like, I really wanted to do this because I wanted people to know that this these atrocities are happening or something. Then it's like, oh yeah, okay, please mention that. But if the movie's like, <laughs> like you said, it's just sort of like, I made this uh, fun movie about like a uh, a guy who's got an imaginary duck and likes to talk to it. <laughs> And I won best, like, uh, I don't know, best set design or what? It's not even a word, but like, uh, yes, it is. Yeah, no, production design is, yeah. Like, oh, I got that for that. And I just wanted to talk about starvation and whatever. I'm like, whoa, what, where are we getting in this? Where I, even if I agree with whatever the message is, there's a part of me that just goes, oh, shut up. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to watch the TV show about the, the person who was lucky enough to win for what they did in their achievement in film decides to get into the politics. And I agree with almost everything that most of these people say every year. I just don't care about hearing it here. Like if I wanted to hear that, right. I'd listen to a political show or I'd uh, follow the Twitter account of somebody who tweets that stuff instead of, you know, I like I'm rooting for in this uh, scenario. Like one of the things that I was rooting for, I said, uh, 
I mentioned film editing, for instance. The odds, when I was looking at doing my predictions, had The Irishman as the, the top potential winner for film editing. And my comment on my prediction thing is, the odds right now are The Irishman. Really? I don't know. That doesn't strike me as a standout. I was more impressed with Ford v. Ferrari in that regard with even the races. And then I said, prediction, 1917. But, um, you know, to me, I'm looking at that and being like, all right, I want to know, like, what the difference is. Why did you pick this movie as that? Why, what do you think is the better option for film editing? What do you think is better for, like, to me, it's crazy that Godzilla, King of the Monsters, didn't get nominated for Best Visual Effects. That was beautiful that was looking. Movie. And I I get it that it didn't get, like, Best Actor or anything. There wasn't any great performances in that, but the visual effects were so good. And the Irishman got nominated for that. And I'm like, that de-aging was bad. I, Robert De Niro was walking around like he's Robert De Niro now when he's supposed to be whatever age he was supposed to be because I, I didn't know. Like, I mean, you saw the movie, right? You said? Yeah. So spoilers for the movie. I'm not going to give too many spoilers for all these movies and stuff, but they introduced the, the character as being when he's got his car breaks down and everything the fuck age uh, is he supposed to be there? I assumed like his 30s? I think he's supposed to be 20s or 30s. And he looks like he's 55. Because the de-aging oh, is not in good. Fa- in fairness, back in those days, 30-year-olds kind of looked like they were 55. <laughs> not that bad, though. <laughs> look, okay. They didn't, I'll admit, they didn't do as good as they should have. But yeah. I give them a pass. I Like, I'm fully on board with everything about the Irishman. Like, I think those movies, when you get guys together that know how to make that kind of magic, yes, it's very formulaic. Yes, it's just all of the, you know, Italian mob gangster actors in another Italian mob gangster movie. Who cares? They're great at it. Scorsese's great. Give him the award. (laughs) <laughs> not visual effects in my mind but i i love goodfellas so if you say hey we're making goodfellas again i'm like i'm in although the thing i enjoyed the most about that movie was i'm seeing it with two friends of mine and we just kept making these jokes about like midway through be like uh like beforehand um one of them wasn't sure how long the movie was and i was like i think it's supposed to be like three hours long or so and then the other one was like a little bit later is not this movie like four hours long so then that it's like, all right, now this is a joke. So midway through the movie, it's like, yo, there's still four hours left. And then it'll be like, another hour goes by. This is only part one. <laughs> that kind of shit. And more fun doing that than like watching some of the parts of the movie where I'm like, oh, he's supposed to be kicking this person because he touched uh, his daughter. And I can tell that De Niro is not really moving his leg because he can't really kick because he's not a 30 something year old man in this. And, you know, maybe a little CGI would have worked, but then again, CGI movies are theme parks and like that whole argument becomes a whole thing. But yeah, politics to me, I mean, we could talk about like Janelle Monet, that whole thing. I, to round this up, we're half an hour in and we're still on the topic of the host. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like Janelle Monet's uh, opening act because I didn't like the song and I didn't see the point. It was just sort of like, here's a musical number to start off with something loud and it's just there. But I did really, really like Steve Martin and Chris Rock. Because they're legends. And they're funny. And they're the fucking best in the world at what they do. I love Steve Martin. And Chris Rock is one of the funniest comedians of all time. Another random aside, but very quick. There's a new fucking Saw movie coming out. With fucking Chris, what is that? Yeah, this took me by surprise. I'm watching The Lodge what? the other day. What? I mean, you know, we go to, to see that on Caroline's birthday because she's in the horror and all that, and she wanted to see The Lodge. And there's like, yeah, this Chris Rock movie's coming out, and I'm like, I don't know what this movie is. And I hear like that, dun, dun, and I'm like, that sounds like the fucking Saw theme. Somebody ripped that off. And then they start showing the spiral thing, and I'm like, that looks like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> it's like... How did we get there? Now, I've seen... Uh, admittedly, I like those movies more than any other horror movie ever, because I, specifically the first two, I think, are very well done. 
First movie, and I really I, liked. Second, I was a little disappointed, but I still liked that a lot enough to see the third, and the third was garbage. And then it just went downhill for you? No, I didn't even bother with the other ones after that. Ah, I saw the prequel recently. I don't know how we got to a situation where Chris Rock is suddenly in a Saw movie, but okay, here we are. Was the prequel just called Jig? It No, it was uh, <laughs> Jigsaw. <laughs> There's like Saw 3D. And, uh, that's ridiculous. Different side thing. But uh, now I might actually, I'm like, there's a Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson Saw movie. All right. Maybe I'll check it out. I'll, maybe I'll see Spiral and we'll do a deep dive and get Caroline in or something. Um, random aside with that whole thing. But yeah, like the, uh, the host thing, I think that they can do this well if they just kind of go, we've got one thing funny for this person to do and then one thing funny for that person. What I don't really like is when they're like, all right, well, now we don't have a host, so we have no direction. So we're going to have somebody. And the guy from 1917 made this joke. And I was like, I'm so glad that he called attention to this. The idea of, hi, I'm so-and-so. I'm going to introduce somebody who's going to introduce somebody who's going to introduce something. Like, yes, they're doing that. Some guy's just like, hey, who do you, you don't know who I am. I'm this dude. By the way, here's Lin-Manuel Miranda. And he's going to introduce a video package. And the video package is going to turn into Eminem. Eminem. I'm like, all right, we could have just cut this past couple of minutes out. The video package was cool. Why not just run the video package? <laughs> you know? like. So all in all, to wrap up our 30-minute conversation about the host, I think hosts are needed. And I think the idea that hosts are passe is bullshit. The hosts are needed. If it's a good one. Yeah. If you're going to do... I mean, I like him in a lot of ways, but James Franco and Anne Hathaway? That's what that's what started this. That was so bad. They're like, all right, we're just going to 86 the host thing altogether. Well, it was um, Kevin Hart. Remember, he was supposed to I host, thought... and then the, he had the whole, like, the bad tweets came out. The and all Oscar's that. so white. Oh, no, that's... That's right. He went on. He had to go on an apology tour. Yeah, he like apologized, but then he like apologized for apologizing or something, or he said he wouldn't apologize. I forget the whole scenario with that, but it was like if he would have just apologized, they probably would have kept him in the mix, and then he didn't, so they took him out, and then they decided that they don't need it. And then I think that that kind of was the impetus for them to be like, we don't need one anymore, or something like. And it works in some ways, doesn't work in some ways. If they announced for next year something like, you know what, we're just going to bring, I don't know, Steve Martin back, I'd be like, all right, cool. Or I would love that. If they said Donald Glover is the host, I'd be like, that could be fun. Oh my God. Like, that'd be interesting. Do that. Hey, if, if anybody is listening to this after 30 minutes of host talk, if you have any connection to the Academy, put Donald Glover yeah. in the hosting position. That could be a lot of fun. Shit, do fucking Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. <laughs> that would be very fun. <laughs> Just, uh, get meta on this whole thing. Have a fictional character host the show. Why not? Have everybody appear as the characters they're nominated for. Yeah, and if they're nominated multiple times, they have to go two-face mode and do split, That's, you know. Absolutely. So, you know, if you're uh, Scarlett Johansson, you got to have There you go, the, Scarlett. You want to play every role? This is your yeah, chance. You, you can have uh, a mom haircut on the one side, and you can be a Nazi on the other side. <laughs> cool. Is she a Nazi in the movie? I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know. I think she, I think they, yeah, I think she is. She might be. No. In one, she's like, in one movie, she's like a baby uh, face. She's a Nazi, and in the other movie, it's Jojo, Ra Jojo Rabbit. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, let's start getting into the categories and stuff like that. So, uh, let's work, I guess, like upside down, sort of. Um, I typically don't put my predictions for a couple of these because I just don't know any of the movies. So, like, I never bother trying to guess animated feature, documentary short, live action short documentary feature normally not international feature film which by the way another whole thing used to be foreign language film big fan of the name change yeah it seems like it's more appropriate yeah foreign language film implies that you can't do something that's not english and then it's like well 
International feature film. Yeah, okay. Movies outside of America. Cool. The better way to do it. This year, that was an easy pick, so I bothered to do that. But lumping that all together, uh, live action, documentary, and animated short. Do you have any thoughts on any of those? Um, I kind of want to watch the documentary short, the skateboarding in a war zone if you're a girl. That seems like it might be fun to watch. Um, live action short. The title interests me. The Neighbor's Widow kind of makes me wonder, okay, where is that going and what all can you pull out of this? And animated short, I got nothing. Didn't, didn't know any of it, so can't say too much. There's only been two years where I actually was invested in that because I only bothered to see certain things. So Paper Man, I think, was the name of the one. And I think that that came before like Wreck-It Ralph. Um, that's really good. And Bow that came out before. Bow was good. Yeah, big fan of that. Both of them are the types where I was watching them in the theaters, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm about to cry with these like animated short films. Like this is this is crazy. So I was glad that like like Bow won and different things like that. But this year, no ideas. Documentary feature, no idea. It's completely lost on me. So what exactly did win for the animated short? Because I'm drawing a blank. Animated short went to Hair Love. Okay. So, I had seen that passed around, like, not the full thing, or at least not what I thought was the full thing, on Facebook, and it's a very touching story. Now, in that case, if somebody wanted to get up there and get on their platform, I'd be all for it, because it fits, you know? And I don't know if it was the director or producer or whatever was saying about, like, normalizing black hair in culture or something. I, I don't remember exactly what it yeah, was. Yeah, which was but... the whole point of the, that was the whole point of the short. And yeah, it seems like, like it. that's totally appropriate. Totally. You know, get up there and do that. Uh, international feature film. That's kind of burying the lead here, but parasite one. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that <laughs> a lot. <laughs> like... Yeah. Oh yeah. We're, we'll put a pin in, uh, you know, we'll, punt that down the discussion will tag out whatever you want to call it um best animated feature film went to toy story 4 the okay no other nominees for that one uh i don't think i had seen any of them i'm trying to find the the list right now how to train your dragon yeah, how to train dragon one frozen i lost my body which i don't even know and klaus and uh frozen was on there no, it wasn't. Now I'm looking at that. So yeah, How to Train Your Dragon, I Lost My Body, Klaus, and Missing Link. Didn't so see... what did you see? I only saw Toy Story and the first like 15 minutes of How to Train Your Dragon. I saw Toy Story, Missing Link, How to Train Your Dragon, and Klaus. I did not say I lost my body, but that is on Netflix, so I will be watching that. Um, Klaus was very, very, very good. But what are we talking about? It's Pixar, it's Toy Story. As much as I did not like the finish, it's got to go to Toy Story. I really didn't like the finish of the movie. I thought it like took what you know about Toy Story and just crapped all over it. But that being said, great movie, deserves to win. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen the other ones like Missing Link, so I can't really judge them. But I was disappointed in Toy Story 4. But it was pretty real easy quick, to just. Real quick. You know, what did you think about the ending? Very disappointing. The worst. Spoiler alert for people who have not seen Toy Story Four. It's been out long enough. You should have seen it by now. You don't leave the kid. Uh, you don't make it a story about how Woody decides to go on his own because you know, all right, well Bonnie doesn't really want to play with me anymore, and that's it or whatever. The whole point of the other movies was like you're a toy, you want to like I, I don't know. It's just that's whole. Thing. I understand what you were trying to do. You were trying to, you know, send a, a powerful moral about you know life moves on, and sometimes you can just find your next journey, and you have to not be afraid to take that leap. But they were toys. You threw out the main concept of the movie. <laughs> They're toys. 
They can't survive on their own. They can't survive on the road. What are you doing? Like, Porgy's cool though. What? Uh, fuck yeah! Like <laughs> he, he accepted his that he is trash. Like I love Forky. They should have just had a Forky uh, spinoff or something like that. They they got it on Disney Plus. He's he's got little Forky shorts, little forks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we had let's see here. Let's move to another set of categories here. Well, I mentioned before best sound editing, best sound mixing. I had predicted 1917 for both because I was just like, I was just you know, maybe it's that, and I'd go with the same movie for both every year. Didn't end up being the case. Uh, best sound mixing went to 1917, but best sound editing went to Ford v Ferrari, which uh, somehow makes sense. I don't really know how, but cool. I guess. I think editing because you got to edit in all those car sounds, right? Uh, yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, you know, we don't know. Maybe it's a fucking thing where they're like, well, they're both really good. You want to just give one to the other and one to the one? Okay, cool. Like, we don't really know. Yeah, I, please enlighten me in the comments below what the difference is between the two on a more technical side because I'm willfully unaware um best original song went to i thought that it was going to go to the one from rocket man it did uh, i'm gonna love me again was the name of the song got a chance to listen to it when they did the live thing with elton john and i'm not really a fan but i didn't like the well, other ones either so you know that matter to me at least it's not that spirit song from lion king for fuck's sake that sucked or, oh, God, even worse, the one from Aladdin. Randy Newman should always win things. <laughs> Randy Newman, every song is a Randy <laughs> Newman song. It's just like, I'm God. <laughs> it's sort of like, you got to run. You know, that whole family guy thing of like, uh, he's singing about what he sees. <laughs> Fat man and his hey kids there. and dog. Like, that. <laughs> like hey there, bro. Yeah. Come on over. <laughs> Right uh, yeah, that's Elton John. If you if you could fucking honor Elton John, you're going to. So good. The other songs, I have, I don't know, nothing for me. So it's not like I'm going to be like Cynthia Erivo. She should have won because that's. I was like, ah, I'm okay with the song not continuing on any longer. And then, which one did Christy Metz sing or Chrissy Metz, the chick from This Is Us? Uh, no idea what, what movie that was from. Let me double check about that because I kind of like tuned that whole thing out. I, once the song was not catchy enough for me to get into, I just sort of stopped paying attention. So, well, she wasn't the Frozen Two one. I kind of liked the idea that they did with the Frozen ones. Uh, the people that Where had it's voice like every Elsa. I enjoyed that. Yeah, kind of like that. So I guess it's. I'm standing with you from Breakthrough. Yeah, that was up for something. That must have been that. A breakthrough, yeah. Breakthrough is that movie about like the kid falls in a in a lake or something. It's one of those movies where it's like the harrowing story of like a Christian mother trying to, and I'm like, that oh, I'm out. Like you know, just kind of <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. So that must have been that well, movie. You know, I would have. Like to have seen more Disney love here, but again, it's fucking Elton John. Of course, he's gonna win the music award. Well, you'd think that would be the case for John Williams because he's John Williams, but he doesn't win best original score, and thankfully not. I mean, I the Star Wars music is fucking amazing, but let's be honest, there, there's been nine plus Star Wars movies by now. Most you know, of the really. hard work has been done. You know, the throne room, the Star Wars theme, the Imperial March, uh, Duel of the Fates. Bah, 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 yeah. bah. That stuff, amazing. Some of the best mu music that's ever been in any movie in history. And there's been some good stuff from these new movies, like the Rays theme, that like, uh, do, 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 like, that's catchy. But I don't remember walking away from Rise of Skywalker thinking that anything stood out. 
1917. You were so mad, you couldn't think of it. That's true. Else. That's another thing. Well, actually, no, I wasn't as mad with Rise of Skywalker as I was with Last Jedi. That's a different story. But uh, I didn't watch Marriage Story. I didn't watch Little Women. Not going to watch Little Women. I don't see the point in watching something that's been adapted a Is million times. Is it weird that Randy Newman did Marriage Story? Yeah. Yeah, that it surprised me when I saw that that was the case. <laughs> Thomas Newman uh, well, doing 1917. That doesn't surprise me. Thomas Newman does that kind of stuff all the time. But Randy Newman, I'm like, he's the one who did that? Okay. I, you put him out there for Toy Story 4, I understand. But you say that he did the score of Marriage Story. That's kind of neat. But instead... And Joker wins because that movie is so good that like I forgive the fact that it kind of craps on the lore a little bit. I don't need Joker to have a first name or a last name or be anything but voiced by Mark Hamill. So, you know, I'm, I was a little disconnected when I first saw the trailers, but that fucking movie, man. There's a lot to do a deep, deep dive on that one eventually. But it goes <sighs> to Joker, which I think is uh, very well deserved. I really like the music in that and I'm going to butcher her name. I'm pretty sure they said it was Hildur Gudna Dortier. <laughs> there you go. That's my best one. Well, you did that way better than I could have even. <laughs> Gudna Dortier or something like that. Uh, yeah, well deserved. I like the music in that, so that's cool. Um, makeup and hairstyling with the bombshell. That doesn't make sense to me. What would you have given the two? I kind of figured Joker would win because it's like it's he's got the makeup on at different points of the movie. They've shown at this point that the makeup kind of changes a little bit based off of some things. They've said things like they purposely went with a muted color towards the end. So the the mouth would more resemble the blood that would be in his mouth. Like so they they actually factored that in. They needed to make it look like he was making that on his own. They needed to do you know, it's character work in a way that's different from other th things. And I'm looking at this at face value, both on, you know, the literal sense and the metaphorical sense. Bombshell is not a movie I've seen, but it seems like the makeup and hairstyling is just, I don't know, make the pretty women look pretty. Wouldn't they just do well, their regular makeup? I'm, there's something lost on me with that. Maybe, well, makeup is an art. And I'm not being funny here. Like, makeup... Have you ever seen... Have you ever just, like, fell down that rabbit hole of just seeing what people do to their face and how they, like, add, you know, length to their face with makeup? And it's a fucking art. And maybe they just wanted to, you know, give it to the women who did the movie where you would probably have to do the most makeup and hair work. Maybe there's some underlying factor of the fact that this is a, a movie about women in the office space and the way that they look and their looks factoring into their work performance. And then clearly one of the themes for this year was there wasn't enough women devoted to. So I, I'm and looking stuff. at the movie, actually. It literally just looks like. Everyday average person. Yeah, I mean, it's like Margot Robbie's beautiful. And when she goes to an awards show or when she goes anywhere, they have makeup and it kind of seems like she's just wearing makeup and it's not special to me, but then again, I'm not a makeup and hairstylist, so maybe I don't know. But to me, I look at that and I go, Maleficent, they had to try to figure out a way to make Angelina Jolie look like she's got those weird cheeks. Judy, they had to make her look more like Judy Grape. Uh, Judy Grable, why do I want to keep saying that? Jesus Judy Christ. Garland. Joker, they had to factor in all the things that go along with that. He had to mess up his hair to go with it. it you know, there's multiple elements. Bombshell, to me, it just looks like it was like, all right, Charlize Theron, Nicole Kidman, whatever, let's put makeup on him. So do you feel like this is a, like a, I don't want to use the word token, but that's sort of what's coming to mind. Is this a token award for the women? I think it kind of is. It sounds like I'm diminishing things, but 
I kind of feel like this was one of those things where people were like, I want to vote for the movie about the women because I, there is not enough for the women going on. So I'm going to, I'm going to give them that. I would have given it to Joker if I would have been on the voting side of things. But I mean, yeah. absolutely. You know, me and you both, if we were the Academy Joker team wins it, but clearly there is something to bomb Shell. Uh, let's see. Best costume design goes to Little Women. That makes really no sense to me either. It seems like that's just every year they're just hey, what's the period piece thing? Let's go with that. I'm like, eh. I thought that would go to Once in Time, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and I kind of felt like there was maybe more character in that, so that would have stood out to me more than just let's try to go period piece. Here's what. We've I mean, the movie's been done a bunch of times in the past too. It's like you have more to work with. That's less, yeah. Maybe yeah. Maybe the uh, the one takeaway from Little Women, uh, my mother actually mentioned it several times. She's like, "Yeah, they've done this movie so much. I don't know why it's a big deal." Uh, let's see what else we got. We got a uh, visual effects goes to nineteen seventeen. I thought that it would potentially Lion go King. to any of the other ones uh, except for the Irishman. Lion King. Why didn't Lion King get this? Probably because the animals, uh, they couldn't quite figure out if they weren't live action or not for some of the older people. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they're just like, why would I give the visual effects for this? Uh, you just taught that lion how to do that. You know. People are still arguing. They're like, this is a live action movie. No, it's not. It's completely animated. Isn't so, that all the more reason that The Lion King should win? I would have been super okay with that. I would have been okay if with you're it being... arguing that it's a real, like, no, there's no way this is real. So then they did their job and they should absolutely win best visual effects. Right. Now, I can make the argument that Avengers Endgame has a lot of visual effects. I don't think it should have won. And it didn't, so, you know, whatever. I think Star Wars looked phenomenal. But I'm looking at that, you know, the little Bobo Frick, I think is the name of the guy. The little little, uh, little mechanic, whatever. That alien, I can tell it's 100% fake because it's like, I don't believe that that thing's real. 1917, great visual effects as far as like meshing how they filmed the movie and everything. Cause you haven't seen 1917. You said, right. I have not seen 1917. The whole movie looks like it's one shot, like one continuous shot. And for them to be able to pull off doing that, to blend the different sets and to blend the, the editing and to do all that, the visual effects needed to be really top notch. So I get that that wins. The Irishman, I, I said before, I don't think that they should have even been nominated. I still think The Lion King should have won, just on the basis alone of yeah. its entirely visual effects. Come on, what are you doing? Give them their award. That's the thing is, I'm okay with 1917 winning, and I would have been potentially okay with Star Wars winning, but I think it should have been The Lion King too, because that's the whole movie. It's not even a matter of like, well, we built the set, and we had to mesh this together. No, you had to make the entire movie look like it was real and you look at those blades of grass and you mean to tell me that they're fake come on like that looks so real uh film editing went to ford v ferrari i want to see that movie you've recommended it enough that i think i'll enjoy it the best way for me to put it is i went into it not giving the slightest shit about racing or this story, not knowing anything about the story, nothing like that. And I was like, you know, it's actually pretty good. Like, I, I probably wouldn't watch it a second time, but I liked it enough that I could recommend it to people, especially dads. Like, this is hardcore a dad movie. Yeah. So if you've got it's like for the dad. some, uh, you know, some like 45 year old, 50, 60 year old dad out there and you don't know what to, to do with him, fucking sit down and watch Ford v Ferrari. <laughs> He's going to enjoy it. Uh, film editing with the other ones. I mean, I haven't seen Jojo Rabbit, so I can't judge that one. Irishman. I don't remember that bit standing out. I don't remember the Joker standing out with the editing parasite, the editing either Ford v Ferrari made more sense to me. So I'm cool with that. Cinematography went to 1917. 
totally on board with that because of the whole making sure all the shots blended in together. So no complaints on me on that part. Yeah, I didn't see it. So I can't say too much, but this movie came highly, highly favored for a lot of the awards. And I think had in another year without a certain movie there, maybe it would have won a lot of the awards. Uh, production design went to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Pretty sure I got that one right. Yes. This movie was gorgeous. It sold me on like late 60s, early 70s Hollywood. I thought this movie was great. But again, like I'm much like the Irishman where I'm just like, yeah, but De Niro's great, and Pacino's great, Scorsese's great, give him the award. It's well, <laughs> Brad Pitt's great. DiCaprio's yeah, great. And DiCaprio's great, and fucking Tarantino's fantastic, give him the award. <laughs> I was massively underwhelmed with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Really? Yeah. Now, Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction are two of my absolute favorite movies of all time. I've seen Dogs way more times than I can count. Pulp Fiction, not as much, but Pulp Fiction, I'd argue, is the better movie between those two. And I like Kill Bill, uh, for that matter. Like, you combine those two movies, it's a pretty damn good movie. But I haven't been enjoying his other movies to date. Like, The Hateful Eight, I kind of wanted it to just be over. I don't remember really having any takeaways from Django. Uh, I have to rewatch Inglorious Bastards because I my original showing of that I didn't even like it, and I feel like maybe if I watch it again, maybe I'll like it more. But once upon a time, I'm watching it and I'm like, oh my god, what's the story of this movie? There's no plot to anything. By the time the plot started to kick in, it's fucking over. Like, okay, so the whole thing is Tarantino's jerking himself off because he really likes this time frame. Well, I don't. So, you know, if I wanted to watch that, I'd watch a documentary of it. You know? I, you know, interestingly, I watched a documentary on that time period. Wasn't feeling it as much. It really felt like, okay, it's a bunch of dudes trying to escape war by taking drugs. <laughs> If the, well, the, if the movie would have been entirely about the Manson stuff, I think I would have been more into it. But for that matter, actually, you know, if it would have been about one or the other thing, like my favorite character in that movie was Cliff Booth. So, by the way, Brad Pitt wins for Best Supporting Actor. And He's good. Yeah, totally on board with that. I Out of the bunch of the other ones, I didn't see two of the movies, so, you know, whatever. But Pacino and Pesci... Pacino, I didn't buy as Jimmy Hoffa. He was Pacino. And Pesci, he's Pesci. Uh, he's Buffalino, but he's Joe Pesci. <laughs> so I like that Brad Pitt won that. And How I, am I funny? Yeah. If he would have just done that in the movie, people would have been like, hey, he's Pesci. Just give him the award. Because Pesci's great. But Brad Pitt went in for that. Very cool. But that was like one of the only standouts from that movie because I was just like, man, I really want this to have a story to it. And. It just kind of didn't. Yeah, I, like I said, I'm a sucker for the things that I'm already a fan of. If you don't know that by now, then you probably have listened to enough of me on these things. I tend to just have wild favoritism. And that's kind of the case with uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. We talked Best Supporting Actor. Best Supporting Actress went to Laura Dern for Marriage Story. You've seen it, I haven't. Oh, but I, okay, it's a fine movie. It tells a love story through the lens of divorce. That's how it's framed. Everybody walked away from it not seeing that and just going, men suck, men are evil, and I don't even like Scarlett Johansson, so now I'm mad that I have to root for her. <laughs> that, that was like the prevailing opinion on the social media. I saw it. I wasn't crazy about it. Laura Dern, great actress. She played a real bitch of a lawyer. So, you know, give her the award. And I had no horse in this race because I didn't see any of the movies nominated for Best Supporting Actress. Not yet. I will see Richard Jewell, and I will see Jojo Rabbit, but and I will see Marriage Story, maybe. 
It depends. You should. We had best original screenplay. Screenplay. Screenplay went to Parasite. Kind of shocked about that. I thought that they would give that to Marriage Story. I thought Marriage Story was going to clean up, and uh, they were kind of eaten away by a Parasite. <laughs> no, that makes sense. <laughs> Best adapted screenplay went to Jojo Rabbit. Again, haven't seen it, but Irishman and Joker I did, and I was kind of leaning more towards it sounded like adapted screenplay would be a Jojo Rabbit thing just from the vibe that I was getting. So I got that one right. Yeah, Jojo Rabbit is something I definitely want to take a look at. It looks like fun. Those two kids, we talked about the red carpet earlier. Those two kids were having a ball. Really? They they were having a blast. They just seem full of life, and I I enjoy seeing that because they're kids, and they should be like off the walls at a fucking red carpet. Because it's like, oh my god, there's Brad Pitt, and look, here's Billie Eilish, or here's Eminem, and it's like, yeah, those kids had a good time. They sold me on the movie. Uh, what else did we not talk about yet? Outside of the big one. Obviously, we didn't talk about the big one, but we're waiting on that one. Talked about the documentary. We can talk about Billie Eilish. You want to talk about Billie Eilish? So, yeah, she did the uh, the In Memoriam. Wasn't really digging it. Uh, Why? Eh, didn't like the song. No, like, I got to admit, like, I think it was 2016 or 17. They had Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters do the In Memoriam. And I like the Foo Fighters a lot. They're my favorite band, but some of that stuff just seems weird. Like this year, I feel like they just wanted to force Billie Eilish into the Oscars because she's the hottest thing right now. It was just weird. I think that's entirely what it was. And look, cool for her. She's only 18. If she fizzles out in a year, like she had the time of her life. Oh, she's got the Bond movie that she's going to do the theme for, too, which that could be a total mess. Really? Mm-hmm. Boy, oh, she's just checking all the boxes off, isn't she? So I wasn't really feeling that. The song itself can be the big mood breaker for me on that. Like the In Memoriam, it sounds kind of morbid to say, but that's one of my favorite parts. It's usually it's oh, kind of touching and like whatever. You get to- yeah, you get to feel things, you get to resonate, like, you know, it resonates with you, you get to remember who passed. You get to find out a lot of people who passed that you didn't even know. I'm always surprised when people get, like, big rounds of applause and we people don't. It, it sucks for them. And if you're, like, their family member of the audience, like, oh, man, dad didn't get that applause. That would really hurt his feelings, you know? Well, Kirk Douglas was like the main one. They started off with Kobe Bryant, but they ended it off with Kirk Douglas. And 103. Good run. Can you really ask for anything more from life? Oh, uh, yeah, 104. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but a- a- after that 102, are you really experiencing anything new? <laughs> you might. I don't know. Sometimes, <laughs> I mean, I, I just recently. He ate some food or so like that I wouldn't have eaten before. Like, you know, you try a new pizza place or something. It might be amazing. You never know. <laughs> hey, are you trying new pizza at 103? You might be. I would if I were, if I live to be 103, rest assured, yeah, I hope- if I have the, the stomach lining and like the, the teeth and all the other kind of things <laughs> that go along with that, rest assured, I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm going to try a new piece of uh, pizza somewhere, but they better still have like Pizza Hut and some of the other ones because that make me sad if they don't. Then again, yeah. this world might not even be around when I'm 104. So. <laughs> this world might not even be around in a year. Yeah. I might not be around in a year. If you want me to make sure I am, then it's in the picture. <laughs> 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 I haven't plugged anything, right? Uh, Patreon.com. If you want us to do more, then donate to the Patreon. That's how it works. Look at the Patreon. See the tiers. Donate to the tiers. That's the Patreon. Uh, there's also merchandise shops, Tea Public and Redbubble. Pick up some merchandise at the shops on Tea Public and Redbubble. Those are things. Um, best actress 
Uh, Renee Zellweger wins for Judy as Judy Garland, not Gable or Grable or Chad Gable, Shorty G. <laughs> I didn't see Judy. I have no interest in seeing Judy. I have no idea what the fuck Renee Zellweger was saying. Both this and the Golden Globes, she just seemed out of it. Well, this is like her big comeback tour, wasn't it? It was? Yeah. She hasn't done anything for a while. Uh, I never really paid that much attention to her. <laughs> well, well, look at that. I th- I think it's cool. Like Renee Zellweger, it's there's a few names like from my childhood that you, I feel like you used to always hear, and you just don't anymore. Like uh, Cameron Diaz. You know, she's just done. Like you don't hear anything about Cameron Diaz anymore. So like I like when you get to hear a Renee Zellweger, and they actually did a fun movie that they probably felt really passionate about because it's Judy Garland. So I'll check it out at some point, you know, if I can get my hands on it for free. Uh, the other ones, what do you think? The, you see Harriet? You didn't see that, right? I did not see Harriet. Yeah. So I couldn't really judge on that again. Didn't see bombshell. Didn't see little women. Didn't see my story. So no, uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson. Did she have a, two shots at winning this? She had the. No, um, she was nominated for supporting, right? Yeah, supporting for JoJo. Boy, she, you had two shots, Scarlett, and you missed. She should have played God. another Asian person. Too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she could have played her. Wasn't the whole argument that she wanted to play Harriet? Like what? <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> Best actor goes to Joaquin Phoenix, one of the easiest ones to predict, and rightfully so. Absolutely. Defining performance as Joker will never be in another movie that's actually tied into the DC Cinematic Universe. That's not what they call it. They, they you actually, know what I mean? yeah, they don't have a name for it. Everybody goes with extended universe, and I don't. That doesn't even make any sense. And nobody in the films have ever actually referred to it as that. So I don't know where this actually came up from. But well, I thought he was real good. Like this is just as a one shot. Like this is a really good story. Have you seen like, uh, Taxi Driver? Yes. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's Taxi Driver. But like, I like Taxi Driver. So you do that, and you make it like Taxi Driver, but Joker. I'm like, fuck yeah, you know. If somebody said like, "Hey man, you really like uh, Pulp Fiction?" I'm like, yeah. They'd be like, "What if we made it to where it was like other Batman characters, like uh, I don't know, uh, Vincent and with Thurman still Poison Ivy?" Yeah, why not? You know, or like you, you want to, you know what? Actually, here's what you do. Okay, we're gonna go down this. Uh, this this rabbit hole now. This JoJo rabbit hole. You want to make a, a Pulp Fiction movie? You're gonna fan cast it as like a, a bunch of characters from the Batman story. If Mia Wallace has a significant other who is like a mobster that people are afraid of, that's Harley Quinn and Joker. Marcellus yeah. Wallace is Joker. And then you, you got. I mean, Ving Rhames probably wouldn't make a good Joker, but like you know what I mean. Like if you take the concept. And you make like uh, Vincent Vega, somebody like, uh, I don't know, Kite Man, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> Uma Thurman would have been a hell of a Harley Quinn in the 90s. I I feel confident in saying that. I still think Brittany Murphy could have been a hell of a Harley Quinn. Samuel L. Jackson, does he, is he Bane? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> by default, like... No, I wouldn't want to see him as, like, Mr. Freeze. He'd just be like, it's cold, motherfucker. <laughs> just kind of like... <laughs> Freeze, motherfucker. Uh, what else we got going on here? Uh, best director went to Bong Joon-ho for Parasite. Did not see that one coming. I had Sam Mendes for 1917 on that. Yeah, they wanted to... Every year there's the one movie that they just want to have win everything. And this year was clearly Parasite. Well, 
it ends up leading into best picture and Parasite wins that too. And that I completely didn't see coming as well. And neither did he. Um, Bong Joon-ho, after the he won the International Feature Film and they gave him Best Director, one of my favorite parts of the night was his speech started off with, I didn't think that I was, I thought I was done for the night after winning that and that I could relax. And it's like, yeah, because I, I ruled that out too. In my mind, it was like, all right, he's going to win Best International Feature Film. Maybe he can win something else, but probably not. They ended up giving him the original screenplay. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's that's really like, that's a shock on that one. And then they go with Best Director. And I'm like, oh, fuck, this is going to win at this point. Like, this could happen. Because they also have a preferential voting system. It's not quite, this is the one that got the most votes for number one. It's, you rank them, and it's like weighted. Is it electoral college Kind of to a like, sense, but it's not yeah. really, it's not so much that like there's weighted votes for people voting. It's more so people rank them in order. So if you, for instance, had like the Irishman number one, Parasite number two, Joker number three, Little Women number four, et cetera, et cetera. If more people had Irishman at number one, then Irishman wins. But if most people have Parasite at number two, and there's a wide variety of number one, Parasite can win. So Parasite hmm. might not have been people's first choice, but it might have been most people's second or third choice. That sounds incredibly complicated. I think it's it's complicated until you do it. Because you know what? I hate the way we do the Mount Rushmore because it's like we end up in full discussions about that shit. So it kind of feels like that in a way where you're just like, yeah, I, I really want this person here, but we're all going to, we're kind of bargaining. I wonder if they do that. Like if they're all just sitting in the room and it's like, you know what? If you give Joaquin Phoenix best, best actor, then I'll give, you know, Parasite best picture. Well, it's kind of a little bit like that because some people are going to potentially feel that way. Like, there's been trade offs and stuff. A lot of times you'll see that people win best director, but they won't win best picture because it's sort of like, well, we really like that one, but we don't want to make that the best picture because it's not the political way to go about things. So, hey, we'll give uh, Scorsese this, but we won't give him best picture because this movie seems like a better option for best picture. But if you give it, in this case, Director, international feature, original screenplay, and best picture. Clearly, people really liked Parasite, and and it was objectively the best movie. Correct. Out of the movies that were nominated for best picture, I saw, I saw most of them. I didn't see again Jojo Rabbit, Little Women, and Marriage Story. Joker was my favorite of what I had seen, but that's partially because it does just speak to me because I'm a Joker fan. I get that the Irishman has its value, but I don't think I would have. I don't know what I would have made my my ten movies, my ten potential options. Say because it's not always ten, but I don't think that the Irishman would have been in any scenario the movie that I would have gone with. Ford v Ferrari, good movie, recommend it. Wouldn't have been a Best Picture winner for me. Uh. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, didn't even really like it, so definitely not. And 1917, so I saw that recently, and I was like, you know what? I kind of want Joker to win, but if 1917 wins, I get it. And then I saw Parasite, and I was like, you know, I really like that movie a lot more than I thought that I would, because I don't really like foreign movies. I really don't like subtitles. And I honestly didn't know anything about the movie going into it. I All I heard was this movie's really good and it's uh, South Korean and whatever. And I'm like, oh, is this one of those movies like it's getting the traction because it's just foreign and different. People are just obsessed with like it. Roma. Being... Yeah, because I don't know anybody that has seen Roma. But Roma was shot in black and white and it was foreign film. Right. And that year when Roma was making a big deal out of it, like people are making a big deal out of Roma, I'm like, I kind of feel, I have a feeling that if I watch this, I'm going to have feel like I wasted my time. 
But Parasite sounded kind of interesting from the little bit that I had known, and Caroline wanted to see it. And I'm like, yeah, let's go see it then. A lot of people are saying it's great. Watching the movie, and I'm like, I'm enjoying the hell out of this. This is good. By the end of the movie, I'm like, you know, I'd be cool with that winning Best Picture. So I like the idea that it won. I look at this award differently ever since the year that Birdman won. Because Birdman, I was just like, all right. So it's a bunch of old dudes in the Academy just felt the need to go, you know what, Michael Keaton? We're glad you're back. Here's all the awards. And with this, I kind of, you're telling me it's good. I haven't seen it, so I can't fully make this judgment. But with all of like the, yeah, first South Korean award, I just get this nasty feeling that it's like, oh man, are they just doing this because it's like a political move? That could be the case. I definitely I mean, think that if you watch the movie and you don't like it, then obviously like everybody has their own tastes and stuff like that. But I feel like if you don't like it, then if you don't like it because of reasons of not liking the movie, it's more valid that if you don't like it because it's a foreign movie. And I know that they're going to try to do a, a remake and they're going to make an American version. And I'm pretty sure it's not going to be as good. Like, there's there's something to the fact that it take pl- takes place in South Korea that helps it. So if you were to just say, let's do that, but we're going to make it in, like, the Bronx, I don't think it's going to translate as well. Well, I don't know. I want to see it for myself now. But And for anybody that's still listening to this and they're like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Does he really think that you know, Asian created movies can't win. I love movies like that. Like the raid from, uh, Taiwan is one of my favorite like action movies, but Did you ever see old boy? I come f- no, you should check out old boy. I, well, we come from a world of wrestling where it's like they live and breathe by for the first time ever. So like, <laughs> I have this training of, <laughs> oh, fuck, are they just doing it? Because it's for the first time ever. South Korean movie wins. Yeah. Because, like, that is very popular right now. BTS and K-pop has suddenly, like, taken over the charts. You know, it's just reasonable for me to think that, like, this is that year that... You know, hey, you were like the British invasion. This is the South Korean invasion. I don't know. I'm thinking far too heavily about this. Well, looking back, because you mentioned Birdman. uh, Looking back, counting this as the sixth year to kind of lump in with different things and just going back all the way to Birdman. um, Last year, Green Book won. Out of the nominees, I wanted Black Panther to win out of the ones that I had seen, which I didn't really see much of them because I I didn't see Green Book. I didn't see Black Klansman. I didn't see The Favorite. I wasn't going to watch Roma. I had zero interest in watching A Star is Born. And uh, Bohemian Rhapsody was pretty decent. I didn't see Vice either. I, I Vice was good. Didn't get around to it. So I didn't Vice really... Vice was funny. Like, uh, Klansman. I thought Klansman would win it. I, lo- I really love Black Panther, so I wanted that to win, but... I wasn't super confident about that at the very least. And the year before that, Shape of Water won, which I liked it, but I was rooting for three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. I wanted that That's to a good win. Movie. Didn't see the post, didn't see Phantom of Thread, hated Lady Bird in the first three minutes and shut it off. I'm just like, <laughs> I f- no fucking way I'm watching this movie. I get it. She's fucking young and quirky and I don't like it, you know? <laughs> uh, Get Out I thought was good but not Best Picture Dunkirk I was like that's just pretentious and I didn't really love it I don't even remember what Darkest Hour was hmm. and what was Call Me By Your Name that was the movie about the gay kid and his teacher oh uh, yeah I didn't see that one either so that one I was mostly like Shape me- of Water deserved to win even though like you know 
Are you aroused by sea monsters? <laughs> I thought Three Billboards was the better movie that year. The year before that was Moonlight, and that one I was... It was, La- it was La La Land. What are you talking about? Yeah, it should have been La La Land. To me, that was the better movie. I didn't see Lion, and I didn't see... Lion was all right. No, I saw every movie that year except for Lion. And that gave me the better judgment of me being like, okay, Moonlight, some value to it, better not win Best Picture. Arrival, much better than I expected that it would be. But probably not Best Picture. Fences, much better than I expected it to be. And I'd be cool with it winning Best Picture, but it won't. Hacksaw Ridge, no. Hell or High Water, Nah, not really. Hidden Figures, pretty good. Not going to win Best Picture. Manchester by the Sea, overrated as fuck. Uh, La La Land, oh God, I'm going to have to watch a musical. And I'm like, you know what? I want that to win Best Picture. And it should have won. But it didn't. You know what? Moonlight was... It stood a perfect... A lot of those movies, actually, I feel like were very... This is a time to make a statement. Like Hidden Figures... Stood a purpose, you know, good movie. Moonlight, good movie, not great. Um, Moonlight's one of those movies that I feel like, outside of the fact that that controversy happened with La La Land, is anybody really going to remember that that won Best Picture? Actually, you know, even better than that, the year before that, Spotlight. Does anybody ever bring up Spotlight? Was that the year where it was Brooklyn, Danish Girl, uh, yeah, yeah. That that was a good year for you. I didn't really have a horse much in that race either. I liked The Revenant. Was Spotlight the movie about the priests? Yeah. Okay. I didn't like I it. I think I saw all those movies. Um, I watched all of them except for Brooklyn. So I didn't... Spotlight was okay. Brooklyn was real good. Uh, Danish Girl? Okay. Oh, wait, I didn't see that. That didn't get nominated for Best Picture, though. Uh, it was a big, what else did- the big short. Good. Bridge of Spies. Didn't see that one. So both of those, I wasn't really all that fond of. I didn't like Spotlight at all. Uh, Mad Max Fury Road, I was very surprised that I liked. <laughs> I got nominated for Best Picture. Yeah, I was actually kind of rooting for it. Because I was just like, wow, shit, this was better than I thought it would be. Uh, the Martian. The Revenant. Good movie. And Room. I didn't like Room. So I, out of all those, I'm pretty sure that I was rooting for The Revenant, and then my number two was Mad Max, but Spotlight was like... I, I would have with Martian. That was like one of the lowest on the list, and the, nobody's going to remember Spotlight. And then the year before that was the one that you were talking about, Birdman, which didn't have a huge, strong year for me, because uh, I didn't see American Sniper... I didn't see Selma, and I didn't see Whiplash. Whiplash is a good film, man. Still worth checking out? Still worth checking out. Might check that out then. Uh, Theory of Everything. That Good movie. It is it is what it is. It's Stephen yeah. Hawking. It was like, all right, that's Oscar bait. Uh, Imitation Game. It's Oscar bait. Grand Budapest Hotel. All right, you're just being quirky. Saw that movie way too many times. Boyhood, interesting concept. Maybe not necessarily the best movie. So that was a year where I was just like, eh, give it the Birdman, I don't care. I saw Grand Budapest. My dad had, like, a thing for this movie, and it was always on. So, like, I've seen that movie enough to think, oh, maybe it should have won the Oscar. But it... Birdman, because of the story, I just feel like it was the Academy, like, resonating with an old man. Makes sense. Like, that to me is why that worked. I don't know. Well, this year, it goes to Parasite, and out of the movies that I've seen, this is one of the ones where I'm like, you know what? I'm cool with it. Even though I wanted Joker to win to a certain extent, and I would have been cool with 1917, and I haven't seen Jojo Rabbit enough. Uh, at all at this point so let's say uh to be able to judge and say like man that was really actually the better one like i like the parasite one so i recommend that for sure 
Yeah, good movies. I want to go see Parasite now. I'd recommend that you should check out 1917, too. And if you watch 1917, by the way, watch it in theaters. Yeah, that was the one thing they said. They said that on the red carpet, actually. Like, listen, if there's one movie here that you see in theaters, it's 1917. Yeah. So definitely check that out. Check out Parasite. I know that I am not at all the type of person who would ever really be like, you got to watch this foreign film because I'm not that person that beats that drum. And if I'm saying that people should check out Parasite, they should check it out. It's a good movie. Well, I'm going to have to check out Parasite then. Uh, Any other thoughts on the Oscars? We ran down all the stuff. We talked about the Um, fact that we don't have a host. (laughs) I'd like to see that return. I'd like to see performances that are based around the movies return i i'd like to see i would really like to see them give a shot to popular movies like if you're that concerned with how your you know your ratings are doing or whatever it is for them give popular movies a chance hashtag give popular movies a chance Listen, we're not they're not gonna get into a ladder match at, <laughs> at WrestleMania, but you know, Vin Diesel blows shit up. It's all Far about too family. much. <laughs> Apparently John Cena's in that family. <laughs> so I guess that's it. 2020 Oscars. Uh again, I mentioned before, drop a comment below and uh tell us your thoughts on all the other kind of stuff that goes along with that. What did you root for? What one that surprised you? Blah blah blah. Just tell us. Uh, if I were to ever win an Oscar, what what would you think I'd win an Oscar for? Best live action short film. I don't know. <laughs> All right, if you're winning an Oscar, I'm assuming it's best original screenplay. I'll take it. It'd be kind of weird if it was like best uh, supporting actress. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> weird these days. I could be a I could be a good actress. I really put my uh, mind to it. I did, yeah, you never know. I did acting in school. <laughs> uh, Scarlett Johansson says you can play any role. For that matter, I can play Scarlett Johansson in her movie. <laughs> <laughs> her biopic. Hey, maybe next year, uh, the thing that sweeps the awards is that movie that's coming out that Nicolas Cage plays Nicolas Cage. <laughs> that's awesome. Maybe that's the thing. Sure as fuck shouldn't be Birds of Prey. It shouldn't win a goddamn thing. Uh, <laughs> oh wow we're gonna talk about that off the air <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh drop those comments check out all the things i mentioned before share your support by liking the video sharing this following us all over the place fanboys anonymous so on facebook tell me what uh, you think about hosts yeah you know who should be the host next year are you pro or against donald glover maybe being the choice i think that that was a good random suggestion and uh what movies are you excited to see potentially get nominated for next year or something I don't know. Just keep talking. We'll talk back to you and all that. Yeah. Any other plugs you want to toss out? Uh, yeah, you know, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dude Felice. You can check out what I'm doing at Fightful.com. I was recently on the SmackDown post show with Sean Ross Sapp, and I'm on the WrestleZone Daily uh, three to four days a week. And yeah, check that out on their respective sites. I would strongly suggest donating to the patreon because i like being able to talk about not wrestling and yeah all right everybody that's gonna do us in so thank you for listening to this and we will see you next time but for now it's time for us to geek out